All right, guys. So today we're gonna be reacting. This looks a little. What the hell is going on here? It looks kind of kind of dark over here, right? That could be the. Let me see. What if I do this? That makes. Oh, sorry, folks. It's gonna look a little dark over here. So today we're gonna be reacting to um how did Hitler rise up to power? Alex Lander and Anthony Hasser, thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for everything you guys have done to the channel. Really appreciate it. Today I have my coffee from the gas station. Man, love that coffee with that gas station. Nice, nice and smooth. You can use, you can even make your own um, combination with the creamers and the sugar. I usually use what we call stevia, which is a sugar uh, taken out from a plant, a green plant. Of course, a green plant. Plants, the plants are mostly green. It's not the Splenda or the, the, you know, the other one. This one's a little bit more healthier. And it, you know, it tastes kind of better. But, you know, for health, we have to just go with the correct route. Make sure you like to subscribe. Also, um, for donations, links in the description. Or you can simply just hit the super chat. I'm going to really appreciate it. Also, be part of the community and the Discord. I'm going to really appreciate that as well. Meantime, guys, let's jump in. Let's see what's going on here. Let's learn a little bit about history. How did Adolf Hitler, a tyrant who orchestrated one of the largest genocides in human history, rise to power in a democratic country? Mm. The story begins at the end of World War I. With the successful Allied advance in 1918, Germany realized the war was unwinnable and signed an armistice ending the fighting. As its imperial government collapsed, civil unrest and worker strikes spread across the nation. Fearing a communist revolution, major parties joined to suppress the uprisings, establishing the parliamentary Weimar Republic. One of the new government's first tasks was implementing the peace treaty imposed by the Allies. In addition to losing over a tenth of its territory and dismantling its army, Germany had to accept full responsibility for the war and pay reparations, debilitating its already. I think that's that's what it started. The payment of the reparation. That's I know you lost the war, just let it be, right? Kind of thing. But man, the Allies went all all the way out and just wanted reparation. I mean that that put some nations out of control. That's what happened with Germany. Ready weakened economy. All this was seen as a humiliation by many nationalists and veterans. They wrongly believed the war could have been won if the army hadn't been betrayed by politicians and protesters. Interesting. For Hitler, these views became obsession, and his bigotry and paranoid delusions led him to pin the blame on Jews. His words found resonance in a society with many anti-Semitic people. By this time, Hundreds of thousands of Jews had integrated into German society, but many Germans continued to perceive them as outsiders. Interesting. After World War I, Jewish success led to ungrounded accusations of subversion and war profiteering. It cannot be stressed enough that these conspiracy theories were born out of fear, anger, and bigotry, not fact. Nonetheless, Hitler found success with them. When he joined a small nationalist political party, his manipulative public speaking launched okay, him. Okay, but that, okay, okay, okay. Let's let, let, let's go back here. His manipulative public speaking. How did he develop the manipulative sp public speaking? Because it took some time. It took really some time for that to be um, developed. And how the hell he developed it? You're not telling me a guy that's very small he all of a sudden just manipulate everybody. And everybody just, you know, went to hypnosis and just followed them. I don't think that's what happened. Into its leadership and drew increasingly larger crowds. Combining anti-Semitism with populist resentment, the Nazis denounced both communism and... ...as international Jewish conspiracies to destroy Germany. The Nazi party was not initially popular. After they made an unsuccessful attempt at overthrowing the government, the party was banned. And, and how in the hell just came up to power again if it was banned? I'm telling you, banning stuff don't work, man. You have to defeat people in debates. 
Because if you don't de- if you don't debate these ideas, they just come into fruition. That's what happened. A lot of these things is just bam, 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 bam. But you're not destroying the idea. Ideas need to be destroyed with better ideas. Hitler jailed for treason. Yeah. But upon his release, about a year later, he immediately began to rebuild the movement. And then in 1929, the Great Depression happened. Wow. It led to American banks withdrawing their loans from Germany and the already struggling German economy collapsed overnight. Hitler took advantage of the people's anger. Yeah. Offering- there we go. There you go. Huh, what would you do in a situation like that? That's the question. What would you do? It's not easy, folks. Think about it. It's not easy. What would you do? What if I... What if... A lot of anger, a lot of inflation, you know, how will you handle that? Bring them convenient scapegoats and a promise to restore Germany's former greatness. Yep. Mainstream parties proved unable to handle the crisis, while left-wing opposition was too fragmented by internal squabbles. And so, some of the frustrated public flocked to the Nazis. Incre- yeah, there you go. He was saying the right things in the right time their parliamentary votes from under 3% to over 18% wow. in just two years. That's insane. In 1932, Hitler ran for president, losing the election to decorated war hero General von Hindenburg. But with 36% of the vote, Hitler had demonstrated the extent of his support. The following year, advisors and business leaders convinced Hindenburg to appoint Hitler as chancellor hoping to channel his popularity for their own goal. Huge mistake. This is a, a this is this was a coward uh, mistake. Cowardly move by Hindenburg. Huge cowardly move. Though the chancellor was only the administrative head of parliament, Hitler steadily expanded the power of his position. While his supporters formed paramilitary groups and fought protesters in the streets, wow. Hitler raised fears of a communist uprising and argued that only he could restore law and order. Then, in 1933, a young worker was convicted of setting fire to the parliament building. Hitler used the event to convince the government to grant him emergency powers. Within a matter of months, freedom of the press was abolished. That's insane, man. Convince him. Within a matter of months, freedom of the press was abolished. Other parties were disbanded, and anti-Jewish laws were passed. Many of Hitler's early radical supporters were arrested and executed, along with potential rivals. And when President Hindenburg died in August 1934, it was clear there would be no new election. Disturbingly, many of Hitler's early measures didn't require mass repression. His speeches exploited people's fear and ire, to wow. drive their support behind him and the Nazi party. Meanwhile, businessmen and intellectuals wanting to be on the right side of public opinion endorsed Hitler. They assured Of course not. They're going to say, no, we don't want you. No, we don't want you, bro. Yeah, good luck with that. ...and each other that his more extreme rhetoric was only for show. Decades later, Hitler's rise remains a warning of how fragile democratic institutions yep. can be in the face of angry crap. And that's why I don't believe in democracy. That's why the United States is a republic. And I think uh, you guys are a republic too. Right? But our voting uh, voting system goes with the electoral colleges. We just, you can't, democracy, I'm telling you, bro, democracy can go downhill quick, man. Can go down quick, quick. You have to establish a, uh, a you have to establish a system where it has checks and balances, and the things like this don't happen. Crowds and a leader willing to feed their anger and exploit their fears. Wow. Yeah, that's that's what happened, man. That's what happened. I'm telling you, man. Wow. Convince the uh, Hindenburg. Wow, that's insane, man. Emergency power. A cowardly move, man. A cowardly move. Politicians are cowards. They are cowards, hell, man. Oof. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I would love to hear your guys' opinion. 
Meantime, guys, I'll see you in the next one.